For those of you that don't know me, my name is Marco Kolich. I was baptized in 1998 as a Seventh-day Adventist by God's grace. I was born into a Catholic family and lived mostly just like a heathen until I understood that there was a God in heaven and that Jesus loves me. Amen. And recently I've been, uh, I've been reminded of the words of Christ when he said that you are the salt of the world. You're not sugar. There's a difference. We are the salt of the world, brethren. We're not sugar. Salt has a purpose. And if we lose our purpose, we get trodden underfoot. The world is changing rapidly, and we need to keep up with the change spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically. We need to keep up with that change because Jesus is preparing to come again. Jesus is getting ready to come again. Now, um, this is my website, Profit from Profits. And if you want a copy of this presentation, of the PowerPoint slides, you can go to my website and you can download it there. Okay? So if I go through something a bit quickly, that's all right. You can go to the website and you can download it from there. Who is wise? Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Brethren, do you want to be wise? Amen. Okay, there's only two people who wants to be wise. <laughs> it's okay to respond, brethren. It's all right. Do you want to be wise? Amen. Amen. I want to be wise. Do you want to be with the wicked? Amen. In the lake of fire, when there's murderers and adulterers and rapists and pornographers and, and every form of abortionists and all kinds of evil in that group, when there's the devil and his angels, do you want to be in that lake of fire? No. no. You don't want to be in that lake of fire with those people and those creatures. Jesus doesn't want us in that lake of fire either. That's why he gave us the Bible. That's why he came down and died for us. That's why he's resurrected. That's why he's ministering in the heavenly courts right now for us. It's because we are not to be part of that group. We're supposed to be wise. But there is a group that will continue to do wickedly, even though wisdom is given them. They will continue to do wickedly and they will not understand. What do the wise understand? Those who place themselves under God's control to be led and guided by him will catch the, stred, the steady tread of events ordained by him to take place. The Sunday law, brethren, comes in a context. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Sunday law isn't going to suddenly spring out at you no one is going to suddenly say, hey, do the Sunday law, without any context to it, without any growth to it, without a steady tread of events. And these events are not always understood to be part of the Sunday law. Because the Sunday law isn't just going to come from a religious angle. We've been kind of trained that because, unfortunately, we've been a little bit myopic in our understanding of what the Sunday law, how it happens. It's not going to come from just a religious angle. It's going to involve a medical angle, a social angle, a financial angle, a cultural angle, an entertainment angle. Do you understand what I'm saying? That there is a context and a growth and a steady tread of events. Satan is going to encapsulate the world, and then they're going to get caught. The steady tread of events, brethren, we need to keep an eye on it. We need to keep an eye on them, and this is part of what we're doing here today. So part of our steady trend of events, sorry, we're closed. Should all, close, should all stores close on Sunday to allow staff a day off to recuperate? Would you like a Sunday off? No, I wouldn't like a Sunday off, sure. But where is this tending? These ideas are becoming more prevalent in society. They're becoming more prevalent. So before in the past, let's take a look. In Toronto, this is a poster that came up in Toronto in 1911, where we had Sunday laws here in Canada under the Lord's Day Act. Okay, I don't know if some of you can remember that. I don't remember that because I wasn't alive back then. I'm not saying any of you are that old either. But you understand that there used to be such laws here in Canada. There was no labor. 
no business, no games, no transportation, no advertising, no gambling, no profane language. So they had speech laws. Okay? They were controlling what you could say, what you couldn't say. Remember, Jesus was told that he was a blasphemer, but he was telling the truth. So just because they have no blaspheming laws doesn't mean that's a good thing. No public meetings, except for church. Strangely enough, in our latest 2020 experience, as I call it, it was quite the reverse. You're allowed to go to the bar, but you couldn't go to the church. That's going to change. That's going to change. Yes, brethren, the Sunday law. What the Sunday law was, same difference is going to be what it is today. So the Sunday law is going to move from, a, from the situation that happened back in the day, back in 1911, even back in L. White's day, 1888. Satan has learned what not to do. Satan has become more subtle. He has become more wise in evil. And we must also become as wise as him to understand the difference of what is going on. Okay, let's take a look at climate for a second. There's a lot of climate alarmism. Okay, people worried about the climate, worried about climate changing, worried about climate disasters, the ice caps are melting and the seas are rising, so forth and so on. So you can tell here that there's an increase in the alarm. The, the base rate of concern hasn't changed too much. It dipped a little into 28%, but the alarmed has risen dramatically. And I don't know, I don't really watch the regular news that much. But I can assume that there's going to be a lot of climate alarmism in the news. People are going to be very much afraid of what's happening. Anytime there's a fire, a flood, how is this related to climate change? You hear it all the time. How is it related to climate change? Let's take a look, though. What does Ellen White say is the buildup to the Sunday law? We are given the context of how the Sunday law arises in great controversy, this is the 1888 version. In chapter 36, impending conflict, its causes. So the impending conflict, its causes, that is what will make the Sunday law acceptable. If you go around today and people, you break down their door and say, hey, I want you to worship uh, on Sunday, and if you don't, well, you're going to die. Are people going to accept that? No. They're not going to accept that right now. But they will accept it. Because like a drowning man, when the world is on the brink of disaster, they will accept anything that you send to them because they want to save their lives. That's what it's going to be. Ellen White says the following, while appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their maladies, he will bring disease and disaster until populous cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. Now, this is very interesting. Does Satan work on his own? No. Okay, Satan has agents, correct? Does he have human agents? Yeah. Oh, you betcha. Revelation 13. He has the sea beast and the lamb horn beast. And the sea beast and the lamb horn beast are made of who? People. They're made of people. Satan has agents. So Satan has a false health message. In a time of a false health message where Satan will appear to the children of men as a physician who heals diseases, he actually causes them. And he's going to cause them to the point, and we're not here yet, but we're going to get there. He's going to cause them to the point where populous cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. Now, imagine we had this latest pandemic scare and how afraid people were. Imagine how afraid people were when it really hits. Imagine the fear, the absolute terror that people will feel when populous cities are reduced to ruins. You know that in the, in the plague... There were whole cities that were wiped out. And they were never populated again. Tremendous amount of death. Tremendous amount of destruction. Even now he is at work. This is still talking about Satan. In accidents, calamities, conflagrations, tornadoes, hailstorms, tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves, earthquakes. Friend, who, who's causing that? Is that carbon? Is carbon causing this? No, brethren, and our Adventist brethren need to wake up, need to understand 
that carbon is not the cause, Satan is the cause, and God himself will also be doing some of these things. God himself will be destroying cities. This is serious business. We are a serious people, and we have a prophetic call to fulfill. We are salt. We are not sugar. We cannot mince words. We must be straight with people. We have to love them. But truth is love, brethren. Truth is love. What else does she say? She says, He sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress. He imparts thee the air a deadly taint and thousands perish by the pestilence. In a time of a false health message. In a time when there will be disasters of every type. In a time where Satan will destroy. That is the precursor to the Sunday law. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Destruction will be upon both man and beast. We're talking about large destruction of animal life. Now we've seen that. Have you not seen that? There's been in the news, there's been thousands of cattle die all of a sudden and they have no idea. Oh, they said it was the heat. Well, those cattle have been out in the heat like that for eons. You know, for years and years and years those cattle have been out there, but suddenly they die of the heat. I don't think so. There's something else at work. Oh, let me go back to one. And here's the kicker. And then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing these evils. Well, because you didn't do the climate change thing that you're supposed to do, my grandma died. Hmm? Right? Because you're not obeying what the climate change thing is, you're destroying the planet. Climate alarm. It's a pretext for the Sunday law. That's what it is. It's a pretext for the Sunday law. A pretext is a reason given in justification of a course of action that is not the real reason. We were told this plainly. In the great controversy, it's plain. You can read it. Brethren, the church is not acting as if it believes it. I'm sorry. Our leadership is not acting as if it believes it. They are acting as if they want to trounce around with the eco people and with the green people and with all these things, and we're a green church, and we're... No, we're not. We are not, and God is going to correct this course. I'm telling you, he will correct it. Imagine yourself in the days of Elijah. The people would have been surprised to know that they were a bunch of heathens. Yep. It's going to be like that, brethren. The church is going to be rebuked by God because he loves us. Do you understand? Jesus doesn't want us to be lost. He knows he knows what it's like here. He's been here. He's lived here. He suffered here. He knows the deceptions of Satan much better than any of us here. He knows what he felt. He knows what he had to deal with every day. And he doesn't want us to be lost. That's why he talks to us straight. And when he tells the church, you make me want to puke, because that's what it says in Revelation. He says, you're making me sick. Not because I hate you, but because of your actions. We have to be aware, brethren. Please, I'm imploring you today. Be aware and be wise. The people of the world have reason to fear for all the calamities of the earth that are coming, but not for the reason they're being told. The Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness. That's called a conspiracy. And some Adventists, for some reason, don't like that word. They don't like conspirational sermons. Well, if you don't like conspirational sermons, brethren, you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong church. Let me ask you a question. Was there a conspiracy to hide what happened when Jesus died? There was a conspiracy to hide what happened when Jesus died. The constabulary of the day, the Roman soldiers, the religions of the day, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the government of the day, all conspired to lie about what happened when Jesus died. There was bribes. There was money exchanging hands. There was promises of positions of power. Yes, brethren, conspiracies happen. And we have to be comfortable with that idea. 
and the thing with Adventists is we're very much like Peter. We're so much like Peter. Peter was afraid of being called names. And he caved because of it. Brother, I'm getting some feedback. Is that from this mic down here? No? Okay. Peter was afraid of being called names. He was ready to pull out a sword and strike, but he wasn't ready to be called a follower of Christ. So if we're too afraid of being called conspiracy theorists, or if we're too afraid of being called nuts and crazy, well, I suggest you have some soul searching to do. Because it's going to get worse, not better. The leaders are concerned, the leaders are concealing the true issue. And many who unite with the movement do not themselves see whether the current is tending. They don't see it. Because there's a difference between what they say and what they mean. You understand what that means? There's a difference between what they say and what they really mean. The leaders know what they're doing. The leaders are connected with Satan. They are inspired by Satan. They are talking to Satan in the form of demonic spirits. They are, they are communicating with the devil. But the vast majority of people, they don't understand. They're caught up in it. They're caught up in it. We are the watchmen. We should bring before the real question at, the, at issue, thus interposing the most effectual protest against measures to do what? Restrict religious or start restrict liberty of conscience. Liberty of conscience is a core Adventist value. Amen. Liberty of conscience, freedom to worship God according to the dictates of your conscience as you read the scriptures is a core Adventist value. And yet for some reason, this core Adventist value has suddenly been jettisoned out the window when it's convenient. We are the watchmen, brethren, and we need to speak. And the problem is that if we don't speak, it'll actually be worse for us. Uh, I think the name is Matthias Desmet. He's the gentleman that's talked to Robert Malone with regards to what has happened with the pandemic and how people reacted to it. And he says this, in, all, in, all, in, in, in the group, in groups of people, what happens is that there's always a large majority that will go along with what, what the government says, what the government mandates, but there's always a core that will refuse they will refuse for whatever reason. And that core that refuses, if they speak up, they're actually able to reduce the violence and the, the, uh, the acts against them that they would normally face if they stay silent. And so we have to speak. It is actually for our own benefit if we speak. Ellen White tells us to speak. The Bible tells us to speak. We cannot be silent. We are the watchmen. We need to speak. Okay, so regarding the Sunday law itself now, okay, how is it actually evolving in our current context? We talked a little bit about climate change, talked about a few things, but let's take a look. What is the actual context? And I propose that the Pope's encyclical Laudato Si really sets the tone. It really sets the tone for what we're seeing today. Okay, number one, if you read Laudato Si, it is steeped in pagan ideology absolutely steeped in pagan ideology. Everything, this is a quote from Laudato Si, everything is related, and we human beings are united as brothers and sisters on a wonderful pilgrimage, woven together by the love of God, has for each of his creatures, and which also unites us in fond affection. Isn't such a lovely idea? Oh, it's so wonderful. It's so sweet. And we get to be with brother, sister, brother, son, sister, moon, uh, brother, river, and uh, mother earth. What is that called? Pantheism. That's called pantheism. The Pope is a pantheist. And for Seventh-day Adventists who have a difficult time understanding, no, the papacy has not changed. It never will change. It has always been pagan. It always will be pagan, period. The Pope is a pantheist. My brother is right here, and he is not a river. He doesn't look very liquid to me. I understand that we can care for the earth. I understand that we should have, be responsible. That we should be responsible. That we shouldn't pollute the earth. Yes, this is true. But what they do is they take what's right and they take you to the next step and then it becomes wrong. Abolition of private property is part of Laudato Si. 
the principle of subordination of private property to universal designation of goods, and thus the right of everyone to their use, is the golden rule of social conduct. The Christian tradition has never recognized the right to private property as absolute or inviolable. That is wrong. When the Hebrews were given land, was it theirs? Yeah. Even if they sold it, would it come back to them? Yeah. Yes, because it was theirs. When you go to heaven, are you given land? Yeah. Yes, you are. Can anyone take it from you? Yeah. No. You will eat of that vine. You will drink of that stream. You will eat of the fruit of the tree. And it's yours, and it will be an internal inheritance. The Pope is a liar. The Pope is a fascist. He's not a communist. People call the Pope a communist. He's not a communist. He's a fascist. And a fascist allows for religion as long as it serves the government. And that's what's going on. Religion, connecting with the government, connecting with economic powers, and they're all going to go along together and enforce the Sunday law. What does Revelation 18 talk about? Who gets really sad when Babylon gets destroyed by fire? The who? The merchants. Why would the Bible talk about merchants if they weren't involved? They are involved, deeply involved. And notice, of course, it's never the popes that lose their land, right? Is the pope going to share his golden slippers? Is he going to sell his pearled robes? Yeah, I don't think so. Pantheism, continuing on. Thus the creatures of this world no longer appear to us merely under a natural guise because the risen one is mysteriously holding them to himself. So Jesus is holding sparrows and birds and crickets and lions and tigers and bears. The very flowers of the fields and the birds which human eyes contemplate and admired are now imbued with his radiant presence. That's exactly what Ellen White warned Kellogg about. This is pantheism. This is fascism. This Laudato Si sets the stage for a universal green Sabbath. Because as you see, Sunday sacredness is part of Laudato Si. On Sunday, on Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has a special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath. No, Sunday is not like the Jewish Sabbath at all. Number one, it's not Jewish. Number two, there's nothing like it. it. Is meant to be the day which heals our relationship with God. Again, wrong. With ourselves and with others and with the world. Not true. Sunday is the day of the resurrection, the first day of the new creation, whose first fruits are the Lord's risen humanity, the pledge to the final transfiguration of all created reality. It also proclaims man's eternal rest in God. No, it does not. But the Sunday is the center of Laudato Si, so the Pope has connected environmentalism and Sunday sacredness in the context of pantheism and fascism. That's what he's done. Okay, let, there no, let no one be deceived. This man is the Antichrist. He is the Antichrist. He always has been the Antichrist. He knows who he is, and he knows exactly what he's doing. Laudato Si, connecting pagan earth worship, fascism to the environment, and Sunday sacredness. Has it worked? Are people drinking the wine? Do you, th do you think it's worked? Mm. Does the Bible say it's going to work? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it does. So let's take a look. So shortly after the Pope's encyclical, we can see things like this starting to pop up in 2015. The Pope's top 10 commandments on climate change. Well, the Pope's have, look at that, top 10 commandments. So wait a minute. It's a commandment. So he's not suggesting you do this. He's not suggesting you do that. He's commanding you. That means laws, brethren. That's laws. If you want, you could even uh, pray the Laudato Si prayer book. You can pray to Brother Sun, Sister Moon. Yes, there is, a popular, there is a popular response that has happened since 2015. Look at it from the Jewish perspective. Is there nothing you can do about the environment? The Green Sabbath Project. Okay, is there nothing you can do? Nothing may be one of the best things you can do. One day of the week, do nothing. Is the Sabbath about doing nothing? No. no. What's the Sabbath about? Praising God worshiping Him, coming to know Him, working for others, healing, doing good. That's what the Sabbath is about. 
And this Jewish man created the Green Sabbath Project. You would think a Jew would have a better idea, but like the Jews of old, he doesn't. For the clergy and spiritual leadership, this is what he says, for clergy and spiritual leaders, make ecology the center of your Sabbath. Who's the center of the Sabbath? Jesus Christ is the center of the Sabbath. It's not the earth. Brethren, what's going to happen to the earth? It waxes old like a garment. Are you telling me you want to make an old garment the center of your faith? That's foolishness. You'd want to pick up an old t-shirt and say, I love you. That's essentially what they're doing. When you think about it, when you take a step back and look at it, it's completely ridiculous. It is ludicrous. It is insanity of the highest order. But it is couched in such language and it is participated with, with such with the, with the music and the entertainment, what was used to make people worship the idol? Music. What did Nebuchadnezzar say? When you hear the sound of the sackbut and the harp and the this and the that, and who was there? The satraps, the ministers, the officers, government, entertainment, together, to lead, to worship the pagan god. This should not be news to a lot of us. But for some reason, some Adventists find this completely new. Let's take a look at some of the Protestant response. I, I, I know it might be a di bit difficult to see up here. Again, you can download this at my website. I'll have that back up again if you want me to. I'm going to read through it a little bit. This is Climate Sunday. Climate Sunday now. So we've gone Green Sabbath, Climate Sunday, in the run-up to COP26, which was a meeting of a UN panel uh, two years ago, and there was one again just this last year, COP27, over 2,200 churches and church groups throughout Britain and Ireland participated in the Climate Sunday initiative addressing climate change by holding Climate Sunday services, committed to practical action and speaking up for climate justice. Climate justice. What is climate justice? Okay, first of all, what is justice? Okay, it's an, well, it's an administration of law, correct? It's an administration of law. When you want justice, you go, to the, you go to the courts. I've been wronged, so I look for justice, right? Basic idea. Climate justice. What is climate justice? Uh, did I offend the rain? Did I, did I trample on too many ants? What is that? That's foolishness is what it is. It's ridiculous. But they use words like that to create thoughts and ideas. They use language to make things real that are not real. I've heard it said, if I can convince you of absurdities, I can make you commit atrocities. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I make you believe absurdities, like a man can be a woman, then I can make you commit atrocities. And people are committing atrocities. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to read that last little bit on the bottom. Climate Sunday was a resource of by a coalition. Now, this is not just one or two people. This is 2,200 different churches and groups. A coalition of 31 denominations and charities, members of the Environmental Issue Network of churches, together with Britain and Ireland. I'll go down a little bit. They want to contribute to civil society efforts to secure adequate national and international action. It's always top-down. What is action at the local level and international action. What would that be? Laws. They want laws. They want laws that will enforce climate Sundays. That's what they want. In the beginning, as the Sunday laws are agitated, and they are being so now, as these Sunday laws are agitated, it will first be, more than likely, just to close on Sunday. We're not going to have a problem with those. But those laws are going to get more stringent, and we're going to have a problem with the next phases. We're going to have a problem. All right, the Protestant response. Let's take a look. A G7 begins, the world needs climate Sundays and wild Christians more than ever. Well, this is probably a long time ago. I mean, this was, oh, oh that's June 2021. Well, that's not that long ago. We need wild Christians. We need climate Sundays. You see, it's becoming more prevalent. The people's mind is being primed. There's a context, a context. Satan knows. The boiling, the boiling frog in a pot, you put the frog in the pot and you burn it slow. 
nice and slow until it's too late. And this is what's happening. See, the problem with Seventh-day Adventists is we're looking for the word Sunday to pop out at us and bite us in the face. That's not how it's going to be. It's going to be a long, well, I wouldn't say long. It's going to be a short, quick process, but it's going to be somewhat subtle. It's going to look good. It's going to look good. It's going to look like it makes a lot of sense. Cultural response. Here we go. Is everybody familiar with TikTok? Okay, TikTok is, if you're not familiar, it's an app, and you can look at it, and people do silly things or, or whatever that's on there. All right? So, it, but it's very popular, especially among the youth. Sunday rest. TikTok's latest wellness trend can help you have a productive week. Look at that. Well, that makes sense. What do they do? Sundays are typically associated with a day of rest. Let's turn the last day of the week. Wait a minute. What day is Sunday? It's the first day of the week. But what day is Sunday in popular ideas? It's the last day of the week. What day is the Sabbath? It's the last day of the week. It's the seventh day. The Sabbath is the seventh day. So what are they doing? They're starting to switch. If you don't know your Bible, you're going to get tripped up. Okay? You're going to get tripped up because it's subtle. So, Sunday can be the first day of the week, but it could also be the last day of the week. It doesn't matter. They'll take it anyway, but they'll end up with confusion. Over the, four, over the 437 million views, brothers and sisters, 437 million views. That's almost half a billion people. The Sunday rest has become a regular occurrence. They're primed. Culturally, they're primed. Culturally, these people are primed to accept the next step. And then they clean their room and they make videos about cleaning their room. Okay? It's already happening. Talk about Sabbath psychology. What is this now? This came out in October 6, 2022, years ago. Yes. A lot of this stuff is very recent. A lot of this stuff is very recent. Resilience, the Sabbath and the planet. What does he say? As we give time to ourselves for a Sabbath and sabbatical to build our resilience, we can also give time to our planet for regeneration, rejuvenation, recovery, and resilience. It's in psychology. It's in medicine. It's in culture. It's in news. It's in prayer books. It's in business. With two delivery drivers suing over schedules, Sabbatarian Christians, these were Sunday keepers, but they call them Sabbatarian Christians, find their observance increasingly countercultural in a 24-7 economy. The excuse is going to be, well, since we had this pandemic and everyone was locked down and we see how well the environment did, then we should just do that, uh, but to not destroy the, the economy, let's do that one day out of seven. Let's do it on Sunday. That's what's going to happen. That's how it's going to be. Could Sabbath closure laws make a comeback? This is January 11th, 2022. Could they make a comeback? Yeah. <laughs> you betcha. If I was a betting man, I'd bet a lot of money on that. But you know what I'm saying. They are going to make a comeback, a big comeback. Now, when they say comeback, what does that mean? It means they're still there, right? If they come back, that means that they're still there. And there are a lot of laws that are still there in different countries, the states, whatever. Some of the laws have never been repealed. They're still there. They just have to be activated, that's all. There just has to be a willingness to do it. A business response. In Austria, several large retail chains are considering closing their stores on Sunday to save their energy bill, and the Sunday Alliance welcomes this development. Well, isn't that interesting? Of course they welcome the development, but they don't see what's tending. A lot of those Christians... A lot of them don't understand. They're honestly deceived. And many of them may actually turn around when we speak up like we're supposed to. If we really care, if we really care about those that are lost, we say the hard things. We live the hard things. So let's not fool ourselves to thinking that we love people when we don't say anything and when we don't do what we're supposed to do. That's not love. That's cowardice. And cowards don't go to heaven. Brethren, Jesus is being plain. Cowards do not enter the kingdom of heaven. They don't. I don't want anyone lost. I don't want anyone lost. I know it's hard. 
I know it's not easy being the outlier. It's not easy. It's difficult. It takes sacrifice, but that's what Jesus calls us to do, to sacrifice our own feelings, our own emotions, our own ideas, and believe what the Bible says and what the spirit of prophecy says and to see the tread of events and do what he tells us to do. Otherwise, we are unfaithful, just like the Jews. And our future will be just like theirs. Vatican News, August 25th, 2022. Catholic legislators promote better society through far-sighted legislation. Okay, Catholic legislators. These aren't legislators of Vatican City. These are Catholics who are legislators in cities and countries across the world. The Roman Catholic Church, with all its ramifications throughout the world, forms one vast organization under the control and designed to serve the interest of the Papal See. Its millions of communicants in every country on the globe are instructed to hold themselves as bound to an allegiance to the Pope, whatever their nationality or government, they are to regard the authority of the Church as above all other. Though they may take the oath pledging their loyalty to the state, yet back of this lies the vow of obedience to Rome, absolving them from every pledge inimical to her interests. Great Controversy, 1888, page 580. Where do you think those Catholic legislators are looking to legislate? Freedom? No. no. They're looking to legislate the will of Rome. The will of Rome will be done because Protestants have forgotten who she is. That Rome is the whore of Babylon, the man of sin, the mother of harlots. That's who she is. That's what we're fighting. We're not fighting people with guns. We're not fighting people violently. We're fighting for their souls, for the truth. We're fighting for their hearts in their minds. It's going to call on us the greatest amount of self-denial, the greatest amount of self-abdignation. It's going to call on us everything. But in that call, what we do, Jesus will bless us. He will be with us. He will not forsake us. We will be the salt of the earth. We will save many, not because of ourselves, but what Jesus can do through us. Where does this lead? A return to Sinai. Interfaith Center for Sustainable Development, the Elijah Interfaith Institute. What is Elijah connected with? Fire on Mount Carmel. Right? He called down fire from heaven and he showed who was, who was, who, was who. He showed who was God. What does Revelation 13 say? Where is the fire going to fall this time? On the right altar or on the wrong altar? It's going to fall on the wrong altar because Satan is going to be allowed to do this type of miracle. Return to Sinai, a prophetic call, no less, for climate justice, again, their buzzwords, and ceremony, a ceremony of repentance. Sunday, November the 13th, 2022. When was that? That was last. Yeah, that just happened. That just happened. Now, there was no fire that came down out of heaven to bless them. But brethren, you can see where this is tending. You can see where people's minds are going. Here it says, on Sunday, November the 13th, religious leaders will return to Mount Sinai, a mountain whose memory and meaning loom large as a place of revelation in the collective consciousness of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, and others. It is a site for turning to God and receiving God's message. Well, was the message received? Yeah, it's written down. It's in the Bible. You don't need to go to Sinai anymore. No, they're not going to Sinai. They didn't go to Sinai. Yeah, they went to the wrong, the wrong place. But you understand their, their, their purpose. We return to Sinai in a movement of repentance and quest. We seek a new vision for humanity. What's wrong with the old one? What's wrong with what Jesus told us already? and its endangered existence, and we seek to receive and amplify the message of life-sustaining living and habits that humanity needs to hear today. In this spirit, which is a spirit of rebellion, the project partners will bring together premier religious leaders from the world's major religions to gather upon Mount Sinai and engage in a first-ever climate repentance ceremony and to put forth a prophetic interreligious call for action. 
climate justice, 10 universal commandments. What do you suppose one of those commandments will be? Sunday, Sunday sacredness. Can we unite, brethren, with the 10 eco-commandments? The leaders of the Sunday movement may advocate reforms which the people need, principles which are in harmony with the Bible. Not everything they say is wrong. Not everything they say is wrong, but that doesn't make it right. Because it says, yet, while there is with these a requirement which is contrary to God's law, his servants cannot unite with them. So unfortunately, we have church organs like ADRA. ADRA's statement on the conference of the parties of UNFCCC, which is COP27, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, as humanitarian development practitioners, has seen firsthand how the global equilibrium is out of order. We aim to do our deed. So are they going to preach Jesus? Are they going to hand out great controversies? No. The offices in our network have started to move towards net zero, as if carbon is the problem. Signed the climate charter. What, do what are we doing signing climate charters? What is going on with the leadership? What is going on in our church organs, in our universities, at the general conference, at the committees, at the Biblical Research Institute, at Loma Linda? What is going on, brethren? I'm telling you what is going on. There is approachment to Rome. That's what's going on. And we need to be aware of these things. Ellen White makes it very clear that a larger class than what we think are actually going to walk away when these Sunday laws come. And what I don't want you to do is to walk away because someone else has walked away. You have to stand on your own. Are you a mother? Are you a father? Are you a brother? Are you a son? Are you a friend? Are you an uncle? Are you an aunt? Whatever you are, wherever you are, we must stand and we are going to stand individually. We are going to be tested individually just like Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. There was no one to help him but God. ADRA calls on policymakers and influential personalities to make necessary decisions in the upcoming UN Climate Conference. Uh, influential personalities, who would that be? Entertainment? My brethren, my brethren, we should have nothing to do with this, and I don't know what is in the mind of those who are running ADRA. Amen. I know what's not there, Jesus Christ and the Bible. What's not there is the spirit of prophecy. What's not there is the great controversy. That's what isn't there. And that's a problem. Wake up, Seventh-day Adventist. The devil is at the door. And his truth is, being, is interfering and is coming into the precincts of the church. And we have to arise and awaken and say no boldly. And yes, you know what? The reality is, is that the Seventh-day Adventist church is going to get a lot smaller before it gets any bigger. Because when God comes here and he fixes this, and he is going to fix it, God is going to have a pure ministry. God is going to have righteous ministers that are going to preach the truth and teach the truth and live it no matter what. He is going to have it. He's going to have righteous people. And they will face fires of hell. But they will stand. And we, need to all, we can all be that people. It takes the courage of Christ. Because remember what it says? The faith of Jesus, it's not faith in Jesus, it's the faith of Jesus. We can all have the faith of Jesus. Jesus, I know it's scary. I know it's scary. Like Jones, A.T. Jones said in the 1893, and I urge you, read 1893 General Conference Bulletin. Ellen White suggested that that bulletin be read. Brother Jones said, it draws on a man knowing this. It draws on a man. It, this draws on me, brethren. I'm living it. I got... I got uh, told I can't come to work because I wouldn't take the shot and because I wouldn't mask and because I wouldn't test. I got treated like a disease, like I was nothing. My faith was interrogated over and over again. And they told me my faith wasn't good enough. But one day I will judge those men. One day I will judge them with Jesus in the thousand years. One day their names will come up if they do not repent. I pray they do. I pray they do. I don't hate them. I don't hate them. We need to pray for our enemies. <laughs> That's the toughest one. That's the toughest thing that I've, for myself, have had to do with Christ sometimes, is, is love those that step on my feet. I can be a little bit combative, but by God's grace, he's saving me, he's saving you too. 
end time warning, brethren, many will be purified and, and made white and tried. How are they going to be purified? They're going to be purified and made white because they're tried. We're going to be tried. None of the wicked are going to understand this. I'm sorry, but if you don't understand this, if you don't understand what's happening, if you don't understand the tread of events, if you don't want to, you're wicked. The good news is, you don't have to stay wicked. That's the good news. Because God came and he died for wicked men and women. I was a wicked man. I did not know Jesus. I did not understand this truth. But he called me up. <clears throat> he called me. And he saved me. Amen. <sighs> Amen. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Know your enemy, or you'll be overcome. Lest Satan should get an advantage over us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Yet too many Seventh-day Adventists are running around thinking that carbon is the problem, that we should be joining with every group, that every time that some social thing happens, we're supposed to make some comment about it instead of living the truth and preaching the word and teaching the truth. That's what we're supposed to do, not join the world. We're not supposed to join the world. We are a called out people. And we're doing the same thing that the Jews did. They wanted to approach the world and be like the world. They wanted a king. They wanted this. They wanted that. And it led to national ruin. Do we want to be ruined? No. no. Brethren, you have a lovely church here. It's a nice, comfortable little church on the hill. It's very peaceful here. But it won't always be that way. Because war is coming. Ellen White said, before the Sunday laws come, and I don't have the quote here, but you can look it up, in the cities, it, it, she says, in the countries of India, China, and Russia, interesting she mentions those, well, if you've been keeping up with the news, and in the cities of America, the moneyed men are going to buy up all the food and they're gonna sell for cheap, and they're going to sell it for a super high price. And she says, and there will be civil war. You imagine civil war in the United States? You think it's not going to come up here? Brethren, we are headed for things that we don't even think are possible. Wake up, my dear brethren. Wake up. And the thing is, the problem, the problem is that we have the two virgins. We have two groups. And one group is foolish and one group is wise. The wise have what? Oil. oil. What is the oil? It's the Holy Spirit. Both have the Word of God. Both are in the true church, the virgins. Both were sleeping, but one has the Holy Spirit and the other one does not. In other words, it is the power of the Holy Spirit that comes into your mind as you read the Word and helps you to understand and keeps you from becoming wicked and makes you wise. The Holy Spirit is what is necessary. Every day, brethren, pray for that Spirit. And, and obey what the Spirit tells you to do. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I'm being through it. My wife and I have gone through it this past year. It is difficult. It's only by God's grace that we're still surviving. But you can do it. God came through for us in a way I didn't think he would. The light that we have received upon a third angel's message is the true light. The mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be. Not all in regard to this matter is yet understood. What does that mean? That means that there are movements connected with it in her day that she says was not all understood. We don't know everything about the Sunday law, but we better keep our eyes open because if we don't, we're going to be lost. You don't need to be lost. I don't need to be lost. No one needs to be lost. Wisdom is available. Read The Great Controversy if you haven't read it. If you haven't read it, read The Great Controversy. Read this chapter. Think about it. Pray about it. There is more to the Sunday laws than meets the eye. Now, brethren, this is part two. It's not as long as part one, don't worry. Technically, it's Sabbath all day, but thankfully, it ends at four now. So you're going to get off easy. The spirit of Antichrist and the spirit of the mark of the beast. Another spirit comes. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereas you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. So what came first, the Antichrist 
or the spirit of Antichrist. Now, when we say the spirit of Antichrist, we, we are talking about demonic spirits. This is true. But what we're talking about is the principles. The spirit of Antichrist is the principles that undergird it. Okay? And just as in that day, when the spirit first comes, before the Antichrist comes, so it happens with the mark of the beast. The spirit of the Antichrist already existed in John's day, friends. But it took time for it to develop. In a similar way, the coercive spirit of the mark of the beast, or Sunday laws, will come before the actual Sunday laws. Because the universe, or the, sorry, the world has to be primed. It has to be made ready. Okay? There has to be a context in which these things develop. Let's take a look. Revelation chapter 13, beginning at verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man should buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, the principles of the mark of the beast are worldwide. They affect every social and economic level. They are a boycott, on the one hand, that you cannot buy. They are also an embargo that you cannot sell. You can't sell, and no one can buy from you. You can't buy, and no one will sell to you. Okay? So when that happens, that happens when the Sunday law is enacted. So what we've gone through up to this point is what's going to happen before to build that up. Massive destruction. Imagine the fear people are going to feel when cities are going to be destroyed. Okay? Not only by wind, by fire, by tornadoes, by floods, by, by medications. Yes, medications are going to be used to destroy cities and have been already. This is the context. So let's take a look here. What are some of the potential real-world consequences? Okay, so let's think. What would it look like specifically? Specifically. Would you lose your job? Yes. Yeah. How about social isolation? Yes. Yeah. Discriminatory practices? Yes. Yeah. Okay, refusal of government services? Yes. Yeah. Okay, refusal of medical care? Yes. Yeah. Are you starting to see what I'm saying? Yes. Starting to see what I'm saying? What did we just experience? All of us. Restriction on travel? Yes. Cannot hold public office? Legal protections ignored and removed? Yes. Excluded from occupations? Breakup of families? Creation of a hated class? Loss of child custody? Mocked in the media, religious worship restricted. You think that's all going to happen? Yes, it's already happened. It's already happened, brethren. And the church has been silent on it. And I'm sorry, but Ted Wilson and the Adcom Committee and the BRI and Loma Linda and the General Conference are wrong when they tell me that I do not have a right to my religious worship before God. They are wrong and they are going along with the beast. Because the beast principles are these. That's not amen. Amen. No, that's not amen. This is what the beast is doing. And this is what they are going along with. Yeah, I think that's what they're saying, sister. They're, they're understanding what I'm saying. They're not, they're not happy with, with that. Uh, basically, sure. Basically, like I said, Ted Wilson, BRI, Genub Diop of the... Of the uh, Religious Liberty Department, who constantly meets with papists. Loma Linda, ADCOM, GC. Yeah, I'm calling them all out. I don't have anything to lose. I've already lost it. I'm a man who's got nothing to lose. Those men have sold us out, and they've cut me to the knees. They've taken away my right to religious liberties. Who are they? Papists? Popes to say such things. The Lord rebuke them. Lest they repent. I'm sorry, brother. You cannot speak against I can say whatever I want to say, brother. They themselves, they just they themselves destroyed my religious liberty. It's all right, brother. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. These men are not necessarily lost. They have the opportunity to repent, like we all do. 
We need to pray for them, sister, absolutely. Because they are men in charge, but they have lost their way. I don't hate them, but I've experienced wickedness at their hands. And many Adventists have experienced it at their hands. And they would not acknowledge it. Loss of job, no jab, no job. Social isolation, social bubbles. No jab, can't visit the sick in hospital. Discriminatory practices. Can anyone tell you? Anyone can tell you to leave their store if you don't cover your face or eventually if you don't get the jab. Refusal of government services. Didn't want the jab, lost your job, no EI, too bad for you. Refusal of medical care. No jab, no organs. Some transplant patients told basically that you're going to die because they're not going to give it to you if you don't take the shot. Restrictions on travel. No jab, no travel. Cannot leave the country, get hassled, try and get back in. Cannot hold public office, no jab, MP prevented from work. Legal protections ignored, no jab. All charter and constitutional protected rights in Canada were completely ignored. Excluded from occupations, no jab, cannot find a new job. Break up of families, no jab, family members say don't come. That's a terrible thing to say. Because you believe the government, because you're afraid. That's a terrible thing. I understand if you're sick. Okay, if you're sick, yeah, stay home. If you're sick. But unless you've got some medication, if you don't take aspirin, you can't visit me. What's that? It's ridiculous. I'm sorry this causes dissension, brother, sister, but I'm not the cause of dissension. It's the truth. It's the truth. Mocked and vilified in the media, no jab, called derogatory names. I have no empathy for the left for the unjab, let them die. Creation of a hated class, Joshua Trudeau said the unjabbed are racist, misogynist, extremist. Then he said they're taking up space. Should we tolerate them? What kind of words are those? What do you think would happen to those who are taking up space? Oh, I'm just taking up space. Well, if I'm taking up space, I'm easy to get rid of, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some of us are going to disappear. There's going to be martyrs. There's going to be martyrs. Yeah, there already are, sister. Loss of child custody. There were cases where some parents lost custody due to the lack of a jab. Religious worship restricted. The state told the church when and if it could open, put conditions on how it could open, determine who was allowed in, how many were allowed in, and what you could do when you eventually did get in, and some Canadian pastors were arrested. And we don't think that this has anything to do with religious liberty. Where is the mind of some of us? I'm sorry that the brother here got offended. But Jesus came and said, I'm coming to bring the sword. I'm not coming to bring peace. Because the peace that I bring is conditional on obedience to my will and my way and my truth. And Jesus has already shown us that he is not an authoritarian tyrant because he's willing to die for me, willing to die for you, willing to die for you. Amen. And you and whoever else. Jesus has died for the whole world. He is not an authoritarian tyrant. Satan is an authoritarian tyrant, and this is the spirit. This is the spirit of the mark of the beast. It is the spirit of the Sunday law, and it is here. Agitation for the Sunday law is here. The spirit for the Sunday law is here. How much more time do you think we have before it actually happens? We're living in the time of the principle of the mark of the beast. It's no wonder so many evangelicals thought it was the, the jab was the mark of the beast. It's so similar. It's close. And if you don't know the truth, I can see why you get mixed up in it. So many of us don't even realize what it was. It's time to become wise, brethren. It's dangerous to sleep. While men are sleeping, Satan actively arranging matters so the Lord's people may not have mercy or justice. Isn't that what just happened? Mercy or justice? No jab, no mercy. No jab, no justice. The spirit of the mark. Spirit of Antichrist. The Sunday Law Movement professions are mild and apparently Christian, but when it shall speak, it will reveal the spirit of the dragon. The spirit of the dragon has been revealed. We've already seen it. Canadian society is not the same. Don't think that things are going on the way they were. They're not. Our society is fractured. The world is fractured among those who resisted and those who did not. And that spirit, what do you think that's about? The 
2020 experience is a prelude to the Sunday law, where mild requests became hard demands. That's what happened. Are we prepared for the storm? As the storm approaches, a large class will profess faith in the very English message, but have not been sanctified through it and abandon their position and take refuge under the banner of the powers of darkness. You know, the brother there said, I can't speak against the, uh, the elders of the church, but the Bible speaks against them. If you read Revelation chapter 3 and you read the message of the Laodicean church, it's not a message of the Laodicean church, it's a message of the angels of the church. Who are the angels of the church, brethren? They are the ministers. They are the conference presidents. It is them. That's what it's talking about. And it says they are blind, and they are naked, and they are wretched, and they are miserable, and they are poor. Our church is rich financially. But it's poor. We're poor, Jesus. Look, I'm in the church. I'm a Sunday Adventist. I don't hate you. I don't hate you. I don't hate anybody here. Okay? I don't hate these men. I don't hate these people. I don't hate the group. I don't hate the BRI. I don't hate Loma Linda. I don't hate them. But they're wrong. And pointing out that they're wrong is not hate. It's true. That's it. The Bible says it. Look up what Ellen White says. She says, ministers and doctors will lead the faith. Why does she say doctors? <laughs> ministers and doctors. Why does she say that? Because the doctors are involved in the spirit of the enterprise. That's why. They're involved in the pharmakia, yeah. which is sorceries. Yeah. That's what they're involved with. We have a health message that is without drugs, brethren. Without drugs. Elmite says we're going to do a work in the cities without drugs. Does that mean we're going to go with a bag of our mRNA needles in the cities? Do you think I'm supposed to believe that God bypassed his people and gave the treatment for COVID to Pfizer and Fauci and Tam? I'm supposed to believe that God bypassed his people. Where in the Bible does it say that? You know, people want to say, say oh, you're causing dissension. You're talking against the truth. You're talking against the truth of what you're doing. Amen. You're the one that's descending. Yeah. You're the one that's destroying people. Yeah. You're the one that's guilty. It's you. Yeah. Amen. And if I'm talking with a little bit of intensity, brethren, forgive me. It's not anger. But I don't think the prophet spoke like, oh, no. You know, stop singing, you know. It's enough. We have to be focused. We have to be straight. We have to love one another. I love the brother. We'll pray for him at the end. He's upset. I upset him. I don't want to upset anybody. We're going to pray for each other. We're going to love each other. And we're going to come together and figure it out. Look, I understand people have a hard time believing what I'm saying. But it should be pretty plain what Ellen White is saying. I'm quoting the Bible, I'm quoting these people, and I'm quoting Ellen White. So, what more do you want? There's nothing more that we can do. Oh, and just quickly, the easy popular side. What was it just recently? We know what it was. The easy popular side is doing what the government told you. Shut down the church when the government told you to shut down. Take the thing when the government told you to be. That's the easy popular side. We have an opportunity to repent. God, in his mercy, allowed the situation. I believe it. He allowed it like a flare. And a flare is a flare of warning. And he told us that if this is where you are right now, you have an opportunity to repent. That's how God is working. You read the Bible. You read the Bible over and over again. God would first send a message of warning. But it's a hard message. Hey, they said to Jesus, this is a hard message to hear. <coughs> Are you telling me Jesus was all smooth and butter? Jesus wasn't sugar, he was salt, brother. Where did he salt? And that message is going to do its work. It's going to do its work. It's going to rile us up, and we're going to fight against it, but God is going to soften our hearts. And we're going to say, okay, Jesus. One man should die. Yeah. That's what the Jews said. That's what the Jews said. One man should die to save the nation. That's what, the, that's what Canada said. A few people should die to save the nation. The spirit is here. Christianity is gone from culture. It's gone. It's erased. It's not, it doesn't exist anymore. What is here is the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit of the Sunday law. What do we do? The only one thing we can do. We can dare to be here. That's what we do. We read that story. We believe that story. We pray that story. 
Right? But if you don't like Daniel, you can be Joseph. If you don't like Joseph, you can be Enoch. If you don't like Enoch, you can be Noah. If you don't like Noah, you can be Peter, eventually. The good part, not the bad part. If you don't like Peter, you can be Paul, who was Saul, who fought against the truth, who was angry against the truth, and he raged against the truth, and then Jesus showed up and said, I'm the truth that you're raging against. And Paul's heart just did not melt. Did not. Brethren, I want my heart to melt. I'm a hard-hearted man. That's why Jesus gives me things like this to say, because he wants to save me, and I'm the one who needs to hear it more than anyone here. Purpose in your heart to follow all the counsel of Scripture and the Spirit of prophecy. Pray that the Holy Spirit to lead you into all the truth and show you things to come. Prepare your mind, as Brother A.T. Jones said, study till your brain fibers snap. Proclaim the present truth in the highways, the byways, and lead people to the skyways. What's the skyways, brethren? Yeah. It's heaven. It's heaven. Our, our home is going to be so amazing, it's going to make these things look like nothing. But, oh my goodness, first we have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Oh my goodness. We can make it easier on ourselves when we come together, we pray, we love each other, we hold on to each other, we confess, we... we, we Confess our faults to one another. And then at the end, we praise the Lord for his goodness and for his mercy that endures forever. Amen. None of the wicked will understand. It's wise. To be wicked or wise is up to you. I pray we all make the right choice. Amen. 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 Amen.